During the Game Awards, the world got its first glimpse at the brand new teaser for Far Cry Primal. This long-standing game series of open-world barbarism with vehicles and big explosions is going back to the Stone Age. It's 10,000 BC with saber-toothed tigers stalking you as you roam the fully interactive world trying to hunt, kill, and survive in the inhospitable environment that is primordial Earth. The game looks beautiful and the trailer shows a number of bloody kills. You'll have your own shot at bringing down a woolly mammoth February 23rd, 2016. Speaking of the Game Awards, Microsoft announced a free update for Halo 5 during the show. Dubbed the Cartographer's Gift, the update will include a highly anticipated addition of the Forge Mode level creator, as well as new weapons to unlock and new maps to compete on. Developers 343 Industries recently stated that free updates will continue as the game ages, with new content coming every month. There is no release date for the update yet, but Microsoft stated that it'll come out sometime later this month. Extra Life is a charity organization that helps fund children's hospitals around the country through the power of play. On December 2nd through the 3rd, we at the ABIT decided it was our turn to give back to the community we love so much through a gaming charity fundraiser. Learn more about our experience participating in this ultra rad event. I first found Extra Life a couple years ago. I was on, on Twitter and I follow a lot of video game uh, websites and uh, Rev3 Games at the time was doing a 24-hour marathon. I figured, oh, well, why are they playing video games for 24 hours? I looked it up and you know, I did my own, did my own research, and I found that you know, Extra Life is a, is a really good program for uh, donating or giving for a chance uh, for gamers to give money back to uh, Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Uh, here at the Apit, we're going to play for Sacred Heart Children's Hospital in Spokane, Washington. Uh, we basically chose them because they're the closest uh, hospital to Pullman, and we thought, you know. Uh, it'd be a good chance to uh, impact the local area and it's a lot of good for the kids there. We also decided to split up the uh, 24 hour periods among uh, eight individuals so this way each person's going to be working a three hour shift so to speak to uh, play games that they want to play. I found out about Extra Life through a bunch of different gaming websites that I follow. Um, every one of them actually does an Extra Life campaign every year and um, a lot of the YouTube personalities that I watch on YouTube that give me inspiration for the 8-bit also um, do Extra Life campaigns. So Extra Life was founded in 2008 by um, a man whose daughter was diagnosed with leukemia and um, she had a really hard battle with it and he felt like there wasn't enough people raising money for it. He thought the gaming community is a community that hadn't really been tapped um, for this kind of fundraising and there's a lot of gamers out there that want to do this kind of stuff but are kind of looked down upon because of the, the gaming aspect of it. It turned into the multi-million dollar um, fundraising organization that it is today. So our goal is to raise a thousand dollars for um, Sacred Heart in Spokane but um, if we raise more than that that'd be great and even if we raise a little bit less than that that's fine too because it's, it's all going to a good cause. We just really want to thank everyone for that's participated in it, um, from the gamers themselves and our crew at the 8-Bit to, um, to the people that donated, of course, and the people that are just tuning in into our Twitch stream. It really helps out, and uh, we really appreciate it. While AAA games, with their huge development teams and advertising campaigns, tend to dominate the market, every year there are a few indie games developed by small teams with a low budget that truly shine. I'm Michael Floresca, and here are the nominations for Best Indie Game. Axiom Verge is a side-scroller nominated for its Metroid-like gameplay and in-depth adventure style. Developed solely by Metroid fanatic Thomas Happ, this five-year passion project weaves a unique tale in a strangely familiar way. Undertale is an RPG from Toby Fox that features plenty of interesting characters, an amazing narrative, and a unique combat system. It uses a narrative format never before seen in gaming, encouraging replayability through the various number of game endings. Who knew space exploration would require so much teamwork? Lovers in a dangerous space time creates an experience that will have you cursing your partner one minute and praising the ground they walk on the next. Rivals of Aether is a platform brawler, and although it is still in early development, it is an instant classic, creating a Smash Brothers spinoff that is crazy addicting, interesting new abilities, and awesome combos that fans anxiously awaiting more. I mean, really, indie Smash Bros, what more could you want? The winner of best indie game is Undertale. Undertale is a game that completely flips the script on how a narrative should be presented in games. The weight of every interaction that you choose drastically affects the story of the game. 
which gives players an experience that can be replayed over and over again. Undertale's combat, storytelling, and ambiance will surely solidify its place in gaming history as one of the best indie games of all time. In 2009, Epic Games released Shadow Complex, a side-scrolling adventure game where you play as Jason Fleming, who discovers an underground base while hiking with his girlfriend. Shadow Complex was welcomed with high marks from critics, and now it will be making the leap to this generation's consoles and PC. This remastered version will feature all of the original game's content, including new dynamic melee takedowns and additional achievements. While console enthusiasts will have to wait until 2016, the almighty PC Master Race will have from now through December 31st to pick up the game for free from the Shadow Complex website. The Game Awards 2015 was filled with surprises for gamers. One teaser leaked a bit early, but was nonetheless just as welcome. Mortal Kombat X will be bringing in four new characters, including two baddies from the big screen, Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Xenomorph from the Alien series. Also joining them will be Triborg, a hybrid of Cyrax, Sector, and Robot Smoke, and Bo Wright Cho, who will bring his drunken technique with him to the tournament. This character pack currently doesn't have a price, but can be expected early in 2016. To the joy of many gamers, Star Wars Battlefront is finally back. The Battlefront franchise hasn't had a new entry since 2007, and with the excitement surrounding the new Star Wars film, it seems like the perfect time to resurrect the series. But does it live up to the hype? Find out in our review. A long time ago, EA announced they would be reviving Star Wars Battlefront, and since then, fans have been eagerly waiting for the latest installment in the series. On November 17th, the title officially launched, reawakening the force within fans everywhere. One of the first things I noticed in this game was the excellent use of sound effects. Firing rounds in the X-Wing while pursuing an enemy TIE fighter sounds exactly like the movie I remembered watching as a kid. Walking through the rebel base on Hoth, you can hear the humming of the computers and other instruments. On Endor, Ewoks blow their horns signaling your readiness for battle, although thankfully you never have to kill any. The moment you step on the battlefield, it is easy to get lost in the beautiful environments. The four planets available on launch are Hoth, Tatooine, Solist, and Endor. Each of the four are very well done with plenty of different locations to explore as you fight the enemy. This game really shines in the multiplayer department, and even offers the rare option to play co-op split screen with a friend at home. Fighting the Empire in survival mode, where you and a friend take on waves of enemies and do your best to survive the Empire assault, is very rewarding, and can be quite challenging when you raise difficulty settings. Split-screen co-op is a blast, but is outdone by the assortment of game types offered in the online multiplayer. Heroes and Villains is one of these game types where players hunt each other down in a search-and-destroy type game. First team to wipe out the other's heroes or villains wins the round. Players on each team rotate between heroes each round, so one minute, you're chucking your lightsaber like Darth Vader, and the next, you're lighting rebels on fire as Boba Fett. While each gun does seem to have a unique sound, I couldn't help but wonder exactly what the difference was between each blaster. Weapon balance doesn't really exist. Blasters appear to have unlimited range with a high rate of fire. This takes away some of the incentive to unlock the weapons available at higher levels. The biggest disappointment to this game is the lack of a single player experience. While survival mode is very fun, the four missions leave you wanting much more. Battlefront is such a beautiful game that a four or five hour campaign would have given players more opportunity to explore these environments and live out their childhood dream of crushing the rebel scum. This is the Star Wars shooter we've been waiting for since George Lucas took us to a galaxy far, far away. With amazing visuals and a vast multiplayer experience, the 8-bit gives Star Wars Battlefront a 9 out of 10. Just because a game didn't receive any hype doesn't mean it didn't deserve it. This award is 8-bit shout out to the games that flew under the radar, but still managed to bring a gamer an incredible experience. I'm Yasmin Omazic, and here are the nominees for the sleeper hit of the year. Allowing us to jump around like Spider-Man while killing zombies, Dying Light breathed life back into survival horror games. Mixing parkour movement with Dead Island style combat, Dying Light snuck up on us and proved to be one of our favorite games. Rocket League redefined the sports genre with its awesome car soccer gameplay. The customization options for your vehicle and absurd physics create an experience that is unabashed fun. Who would have expected a Pokemon spin-off to be so well developed? Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon has one of the most rewarding end games ever. Awesome dungeon crawling and a masterful soundtrack. How this game flew under the radar is a mystery to say the least. Pillars of Eternity is a game that recaptures the nostalgic classic 90s RPG magic. 
This Kickstarter game proves that the traditional loot-based action RPG games can still be awesome through its excellent storytelling and challenging gameplay. The winner for sleeper hit of the year is Dying Light. Dying Light was cast off as a Dead Island clone before it was released in January, but it turned many heads with its Assassin's Creed-esque parkour and frightening zombies that constantly create heart-pounding moments. With new DLC coming out soon, the game can only get better. Hey guys, Jeremy here. I decided since I started this year, I should probably finish it too. So, the moment you've all been waiting for, the Game of the Year Award. These are the games that we at the 8-Bit felt were in truly incredible games. Games that wowed us, games that reminded us why we play. Here are the nominees that we felt could take up the mantle of Game of the Year. Combining masterful espionage, running and gunning through enemies, and resource management, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain single-handedly reinvented tactical stealth games. We're not afraid to call this one Kojima's masterpiece. After years of anticipation, Bethesda came through and did not disappoint. Fallout 4 brought forth the evolution of storytelling and open-world RPGs. Combining a great story, phenomenal combat, and settlement building that will make you want to play day after day. Super Mario Maker is more than just a level creator. It allows fans to relive the glory days of Mario in all the ways they never could. Or to create something that captures the gamer spirit. The game is a Nintendo fan's dream and should be in every gamer's library. Last but not least is Undertale, an RPG bestowed with a remarkable story. It reminds us that games can do so much more than just show off spectacular graphics. They can also wow us by engaging with our humanity. Undertale proves that even the smallest games can innovate storytelling experiences. And the winner of the 8-Bits Coveted Game of the Year award is... Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. Metal Gear Solid V epitomizes what the Game of the Year should be. Its high level of polish and detail, masterclass third-person stealth gameplay, and brilliant storytelling creates an unparalleled experience that will be remembered for years to come. If you have the means to play it, you owe it to yourself to play this masterpiece. I hope you all have enjoyed the awards. That's going to be all we have for you for this episode. From everyone here at the 8-Bit, current and past members, thank you so much for watching. It has been an incredible year, and this has been truly an amazing experience for all of us. We're sad to say the season finale will be the very last episode of the 8-Bit. We're so thankful for the opportunity to do what we love, and we're even more thankful to everyone who has watched and supported us along the way. This is Angela Nguyen, Game Over.